During the First and Second World Wars, with the war industry running at full throttle, steel became increasingly scarce. Much of it was used for building ships. To overcome this shortage, the United States Maritime Commission ordered dozens of experimental concrete ships. Several other countries also built many of them. In Europe, for example, concrete barges played a crucial role in the D-Day landings in Normandy. Germany also constructed dozens of concrete ships during the Second World War. Despite their advantages, being simpler to produce, using more abundant materials, and being resistant to rust, why aren't they manufactured on a large scale today? Why aren't these massive cargo ships made of concrete? In 1848, the Frenchman Joseph Louis Lambert built the first concrete boat, a small rowboat. And because of this, he is considered the father of ferro-cement, the precursor to reinforced concrete. After that, several other countries also built small barges, boats, and other vessels made of concrete. However, it was during the First World War that these vessels gained greater significance. Now with reinforced concrete, the U.S. government commissioned 12, primarily to assess their feasibility, with one measuring 434 feet in length, 132 meters. It was such an important technology that in 1918, the United States even caught a German agent stealing an almost complete set of blueprints and plans for concrete ships, which further reinforced the credibility of the project. But before most of them could be completed, the war had already ended and they were sold to private companies. Other countries in Europe also built their own, such as Norway, which launched the first ocean-going concrete ship in 1917. It measured 84 feet in length, 25.6 meters, and was equipped with diesel engines. Hundreds of other concrete barges were also constructed around the world. During World War II, the U.S. government commissioned 24 steam-powered ships, each measuring 366 feet in length, 111 meters. Innovations in the composition of the concrete made these ships stronger compared to those built during World War I. In addition to these, at least 80 concrete barges without self-propulsion were also built, being towed by tugboats. Unlike the flat-bottom barges we see today, these had the same shape as other ships. They were used to transport cargo such as oil, minerals, armaments, and supplies, particularly refrigerated goods. The United States alone produced 78 of them. The British government also built dozens of units, primarily barges. These were widely used along with those from the United States during the D-Day landings in Normandy for transporting ammunition, fuel, serving as floating bridges, and acting as barriers. Some were equipped with engines and used to transport troops in as mobile mess halls, there were several factors that weighed in favor of concrete ships during the wartime period. The most significant was that during both World War I and World War II, steel was one of the scarcest materials. Concrete ships required less than half the steel used in conventional ships. Additionally, the materials needed for concrete were abundant and readily available. Another factor was that shipyards capable of building steel ships were operating at full capacity. As a result, additional shipyards were constructed to produce concrete ships. Since the process and machinery involved were simpler, these shipyards were cheaper to build. Additionally, the workforce didn't need to be as specialized, eliminating the need for highly experienced welders, for instance. Another factor that was of great interest to Germany was that these ships did not attract magnetic naval mines. Combined with the steel shortage of the time, this led the German leader with the Charlie Chaplin mustache to order the construction of 50 such ships for cargo transport during World War II. Two of them have been restored and are currently operational, serving as museum restaurant ships. Concrete has small pores, and its permeability depends on their size, distribution, and continuity. However, depending on the composition of the concrete, such as the amount of cement, the size of the aggregates, the water cement ratio, and the proper curing process, it can become watertight, which is the key property contributing to its durability. Concrete is about four times less dense than metal, meaning it is lighter. However, it is also more brittle. To compensate for this, in addition to the inclusion of steel bars and wires, concrete walls need to be approximately 10 times thicker than metal ones, which increases the ship's weight. As a result, it either carries less cargo or its overall size and weight are increased. Thus, for the same cargo load, a concrete ship displaces more water than a steel one, which increases drag and consequently fuel consumption. Here we can see the ratio between the weight a ship can carry and its total weight. The closer this ratio is to 1, the more efficient it is at transporting cargo. It's clear that concrete ships rank significantly lower than steel ships. A comparative study conducted in 1978 between two large ships of the same dimensions showed that the concrete ship would weigh almost twice as much as the steel one to carry the same amount of cargo. Reinforced concrete is much less expensive per unit of volume than steel. The problem, as we've seen, is that concrete ships require significantly more material and weigh much more. 
A concrete ship from those commissioned during World War II cost $2.1 million at the time, while a Steel Liberty class ship cost around $2 million. Close, right? The difference is that the concrete ship had a carrying capacity of 5,500 tons, whereas the Liberty ship could carry 10,800 tons, almost double the capacity. In other words, the cost of building the ship per ton of cargo capacity was twice as high for the concrete ship. Some other positive aspects of concrete vessels include, concrete is highly impact resistant without breaking the hull, whether the impact is with other vessels, icebergs, or natural structures. Like metal ships, they are easy to repair in case of damage, using either cement or resins. One of the biggest advantages of using reinforced concrete over metal in vessels is its low maintenance, as it doesn't rust, except in cases of cracks, which can be repaired. In other words, it offers excellent durability. The material used in its construction is abundant. It offers a storage and cargo transportation space that is highly resistant to corrosion, making it suitable for carrying any type of material. Compared to steel, concrete responds more slowly to temperature variations, which is highly beneficial for transporting hot goods, such as oils, and cold goods, such as liquefied gas. Regarding maximum bending and shear forces, studies have shown that they are very close to those of steel ships. As a drawback, in addition to the operational cost issue caused by high fuel consumption, there is also the labor cost for its construction, which requires a large workforce. However, the labor can be less specialized and the machinery can be simpler. In less industrialized regions with low-cost labor, this can become a major advantage. Most of those built during the First and Second World Wars became too expensive to operate and were sunk near coastlines, serving as breakwaters to protect the shore from waves. Look how resilient they are. The SS San Pascual was an oil tanker built in the United States in 1920. In 1924, it was sold to Cuba, where it served as a supply transport vessel. Eight years later, it was dismantled and repurposed as a depot ship. In 1933, it ran aground off the Cuban coast. During World War II, it was equipped with machine guns and cannons to monitor German submarines. During the Cuban Revolution, it served as a prison for Che Guevara's army. Later, it became a sports club and a venue for fishing competitions. By the 1990s, it had been converted into a 10-room hotel. Today it stands abandoned. Although no longer afloat, its hull remains surprisingly well preserved, more than 100 years after it was built. Another example is the SS Peralta, a concrete oil tanker launched in 1921, also from the United States. It remains afloat more than 100 years later, and now serves as a breakwater along the Canadian coastline. Yet another concrete ship still afloat is the one built in Germany in 1943. It has been restored and is now a tourist attraction. Although advancements in concrete compositions and structural designs have mitigated the issue of excessive weight relative to usable volume, steel ships remain more efficient in this aspect, consuming less fuel. After World War II, floating concrete structures were primarily used for barges, oil extraction and storage platforms, floating bridges, docks, and breakwaters. And now you know the story of concrete ships, vessels that seem to defy the passage of time. Thank you for your company, and until next time. Where our hearts sometimes played chess